uh, prior to prior to the civil rights movement and affirmative action, etc., you didn't have any rights at all, right? What happened is in the 17th century, right here in Georgia, where we dwelt, where you mentioned, Native Americans, the Europeans came in and made a deal with us for equipment, heavy equipment, because we couldn't sell our goods because heavy equipment was starting to become a more sophisticated farming. So they made a deal with us and told us that they would give us a certain amount of heavy equipment, like they usually do, and we pay them back in six months. You follow? Know, however, and you can read this, you can read up on this. However, after we did it, they didn't do, they didn't hold true to that treaty because it was a writ, it was oral, or not a written agreement. They came back within three weeks, and then when we couldn't afford to pay them, what they did is they took the women and the girl children from us. All right, they didn't stop there because that's not how the young masses dealt, right? And they started having children by them, all right? What happened within a year's time, the Yamasee were trying to hold true to their word, and when they found out that these Caucasians, these British Caucasians, were having sex with their daughters, there was a, what they call a Yamasee massacre here in Georgia, right, like the Zulu did, and they rose up and they started massacring Europeans and pushed them off the land. But what they had to take back into consideration is that a lot of their women had been raped by these Caucasians and the children being born to them were mulattoes. You follow that? These mulattoes grew up, wanted to leave our campsites or what they call presently reservations. They wanted to leave the land and go and look and seek out lighter people. So when these mulatto children sought out Caucasians to marry, they produced these Caucasian-looking people who by right can say they're uh, Yamasi. You follow? You understand what happened? And then what happened is the tribe got a war broke out. We blended in with the Seminole, the Creek, the Oshito, the Wichita, and different tribes as Yamasi. We ended up inside because they're, then all the Europeans came together against us because we whipped a couple of ass. So they got all the different tribes together, uh, all the different cults of uh, the Irish, the Polish, the French, everybody got together and came down us right here in Georgia, right here in Millersville. Your father and mashed us. So the men had to, we had migrated in different directions. Those that went to Georgia, we became known as the Seminole. The far ones, ones who are going, so the others of us went as far as Chile became as, uh, Yuc as far as the Yucatan. We scattered in different directions and we became mixed in with the Cherokee, so you find a lot of your masses saying, I'm a Cherokee. And you say, how do you know? Because my grandmother is a Cherokee. And it goes back further than your grandmother. What about your great-great-grandmother? What tribe was she? Because the Cherokees was not always there. So they were called an they were called an Annie and Digga, which meant we the people. And all the tribes started naming themselves, like I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, we the people because that was the first line of the Iroquois Constitution. So when the Constitution was set up here, as a remembrance of who they are, most of the Native Americans in their own dialect named their, the tribe, we the people, as a group, because we all had to unite to survive. And so we broke off and became different tribes. So yes, you have Caucasians that can stand up and say, I am your master. As long as you don't stand up and say, right, he's your master, he's my son. You follow that? And you couldn't do that until certain bills where guys like Dr. Martin Luther King, who didn't appear to have any value, had a great amount of value insofar as he got certain rights implemented that gave us the right to stand up in a courtroom. Whereas, let's say, the Nation of Islam ain't giving us no rights. All we're doing is, as the Nation of Islam, we're doing is talking about what we're going to do to the white man. Dr. Martin Luther King, you know what I'm saying, went out and got certain things passed that gave us the right to get into the courts. Uh, to get into the, uh, what do you call it, into the universities so we can get the kind of degrees, so we can do the kind of investigation that is necessary for us to make uh, claims. And it's not about, it's not about reclamation of land. You know, you know, you know, the law literally says don't say reclamation of land. I mean, you, don't, you just got to be on the land. So I don't have to reclaim my land. I have to be on the land and then tell them from the land, this is mine. You know what I'm trying to say? Here's that you had a situation in America where you had the Africans were brought over. Remember, you got several different slave trades. And they try to keep, say, for instance, each, let's say, each group starts basing their philosophy or doctrine around one particular slave trade. Like the Nation of Islam keeps talking about John Hawkins in the 15th. 
right? Then you find that the Moorish Science Temple talks about the 17th century, and they're talking about city, Sultan City, and that slave exchange. We as Ansars, we talked about the slave trade that came out of Sudan, where the people of um, uh, Zimbabwe, certain Muslims, sold us over into slavery. That's our Ansars, and everyone, and all these were events. He wasn't in uh, Mother Africa taking one group. He was going around taking different people and making a melting pot. But what they don't mention is that there were already people here. There was black people already in America, which are the parents of all those people from different parts of Africa because they moved over here from Uganda thousands of years before we even broke up into different tribes in Africa and became what the Arabs call Africans or uh, Ifriqians, those divided into Faraka, into pieces. You follow what I'm saying? So now, what happened is when they got here, at the time we moved way down, let's move down a thousand years, and move to the 6th, 15, 16, 17, and 18th century, you had in the shores of America, Moors who were not Muslims, had nothing to do with being Muslim. But you had Ansars who were Muslims, who came over here, who were brought, I mean, born over here out of Sudan. All right? So when you get a picture of it, a picture of, uh, let's say, this is America now, and this is Africa. People were brought over here, all over this place here. And when the Caucasians started making rules and regulations, he was concerned with the African slave trade. He didn't care nothing about the Moors. The Moors who came from Morocco, right? He didn't care nothing about the Moors that came from Mauritania. He didn't care about the Moors who came from Senegal. He didn't care about the Moors who came. All he was concerned with is niggas from Niger, which he called the Ivory Coast. He called the niggas, nigger, negrito. And they flipped the, they flipped the coin in the Latin-speaking world and gave negrito the respect when Morenos used to have the respect. And then they called him negrito Morenos, which is black and Moors. Now they really got the people confused, it was done. So a person in Spanish will walk up to you and call you Negrito and make like they're giving you a compliment. They don't know that the Caucasians switched the Portuguese turned it around. And Morenos was the compliment. Because it meant a more black by identity, not black by color. You follow what I'm trying to say? All right, so now, to get to your point. So you did have slaves in America brought over here on slave ships. There was some. That old story about a thousand people bowing the back of the boat, that's crap. You would, you, would have, you would have died before you got here. They put a thousand people in the bottom of the boat and everybody had to go to the bathroom. Everybody had to eat. They had to unchain everybody. That's crap. They, that, they wrote that story. You know they brought a boat with a thousand people? That's crap. You would never made it in. But there were some here. Then, America was first recognized by the Moors of Morocco. Right? A sultan city was the first one to recognize America's right to exist. You follow? So therefore, they sent out ships to protect America. In the Moors. I got this in the, in, the, in the Constitution book, the whole dialogue, the whole history is written out for you. It tells you the place, the time, and everything. Sent them here. So they made a treaty with them first. This is why the White House, the capital, so-called capital, is called the White House. Because the word White House comes from the word Dar Beidah. Dar Beda means the White House in Morocco, and that's the capital of the largest city there. Rabat has recently become the capital of Morocco. The original capital of Morocco was Dar Beda, which in Spanish we say Casablanca, which means the same thing, a white castle or a large white house. So the fact that the United States has a white house as a central point and has a dome on it like a mosque, tells you that it was influenced by people who came from Morocco called Moors, Dar Bedar. You follow what I'm trying to say? And they sent Abraham Lincoln inside it, but he's sitting in this, the seat of Ramesses. He's not sitting, he's sitting like a feral Ramesses. If you ever see the statue of Ramesses, when you walk by and think about what you see in Washington, Abraham Lincoln is doing the same thing. So every grandmaster is because of Ramesses. Okay. So there were Negroes here that were called slaves, even though we know the word slave is Slavic and can't apply to us. They didn't allow themselves to be called slaves and be treated like property. You follow that? You also had the Moors. Now, what was important about this thing is when I say the Moors came to America, the first thing that comes to your mind 
is Moroccans with light skin and wavy hair. But the treaty said, do not send any mulatto. No mulattoes was allowed. And mulatto was not, like I said many times, was not even an English word. It was from molad. Those born out of our seed. So they did not allow, they only allowed dark-skinned, woolly-haired more to come to America. Because they did not want to mix them in with their mulattoes who was already here because of the, uh, what do you call it, the French and the Portuguese raping us. You know, hunky. Hunk, you know what hunky means, right? Huh? You know where it came from? When they would go outside our towns on the other side of the road and honk their horns so the black women would come out. That's why we refer to them as hunkies. They would honk because horns years ago didn't go beep, they just go honk, honk, if you're old enough, you know that. And so the only way they could get the black women, the Caucasian, get black women to come out at night to make money for their families before they brought them in their house and made like they were washing the floors and taking care of the kids so they can have sex with them. They used to pull up outside our neighborhood, honk, 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 and black women would know to go out there to the woods and they'd meet white or police officers or whatever, and they'd get a couple of dollars for some sex. They'd also implant seeds at times. It's a sad story, but it just happened to be true. That's where that's the name came from. But okay, if I got lost. So they only allowed a certain more here. They were afraid that the more that came in were going to get mixed up with the uh, African that was here and the mulattoes. So they said, make sure you only bring in dark-skinned, woolly-haired moors from Morocco. Now, part of the plot was to later capture them. They didn't tell us that, though. So now when we came in as Moors, they gave us documents and paperwork and treaties made with George Washington with his signature on it, which is in that book I gave you, about telling you that they are to be treated like equal citizens to every Caucasian in this country. And these were black men and black women with, fed with these kind of feathers on, walking around during the same time they were having slave blocks and southern people, there were black people there buying the slaves who were more. That's real. That was us. Your father was our culture. We forgot it because we think Africa is our only home. But we were already here. And then we had something that came over here. Again, we were not Muslims. We didn't care. They associate the word more with the word Muslim. Muslim is, is, a, is a curse to a real more. Because we knew that the Berbers invaded us with their Arab, Arab, Arabized ways and poisoned us into believing in their image and therefore pushed more out of existence and all the cultural contributions we did got lost. The problem? But they go back. Once they got over here, remember you had your slaves and then you had your Moors and then you had your indigenous people who were already here. The indigenous people were mixed in with Hushen, right? And they produced what you call Native Americans. When you hear about a Native American and you see a person with a round face and two long straight braids, that's not the Native American, that's an Indian. You understand? That's an American Indian. But that's not a Native American. Native Americans were all max like that face, that statue we made out there when you come in with that big round head and that big lips and that big nose. I wouldn't even be classified as all Mac. They're purer than me. It's what you mean to be honest, but that's who they were. They were the indigenous people of this land. The Chinese came in, mixed in with them, and produced what you're calling Native Americans today or Indians. And the Caucasian gave them all our rights. Right. Now they walk around saying Cherokee, Choctaw, Shinnecock, Cheyenne, and we walk around saying African, African, African. So what he did to appease the African, he created what's called the Emancipation Proclamation. Sounds big. But the whole thing is he put forth a proclamation that he's going to emancipate us and free us from slavery. But he did not promise us anything. Now there was a promissory note saying 40 acres of the mule. But we multiplied so fast that they was afraid that if they offered every person who stepped forward for that 40 acres of the mule, there wouldn't be enough acreage left on this planet. We would take over. So they had to drop that and the mule. 
and just start slapping us upside the head whenever we started acting for our rights or creating organizations that would stifle our growth. You follow that? The first thing to do was to create religion. Get us caught up in religions that don't pertain to our own past, such as regardless of what I or Farrakhan or the five percent or the Morris Science Temple or anybody else says, when you see this word, which I'm quite sure you have a hard time figuring out, the number L out of I could write it with a long letter, but I'm doing it with a shortcut, okay? Arab. Drop this and go Arab. You hear that word, Arab? What do you think of when you hear Arab? Tell the truth. Do you think of Farrakhan? Do you think of Noble Juali? Do you think of the Ansar? No. You think of Saudi Arabian Arabs. Light-skinned guys walking around with white on, with pop bellies and stuff. <laughs> you know, cocky-ass attitudes. All tycoon. That is Arab. When you trace that back to, they'll say, Muhammad was an uh, Arabian prophet. No Muslim will deny that, that Muhammad was an Arabian prophet, right? So there's a subtle confession that Muhammad was an Arab prophet. You with that? So when a Muslim walks around America, Boasting, I am a Muslim, and I'm in a Muslim, everybody goes, mm hmm. So when we as Ansar jump up and say, we are original Arabs and we're Muslim, people go, mm -hmm. we understand that y'all converted to the Arab religion, right. Right? right? Because when we try to trace our roots back up in here, where are you going back to? You're going back to the year 570, 632 AD. Every time Muslims add AD, they com they confess to Christianity because it's a from Arab dominance. That is the birth of Muhammad, the death of Muhammad. The Hadith of Mu the Muslim world describes Muhammad as a pale Arab. So any Muslim in America, any one of us who's black skinned, who stands up and says, "I am a Muslim," is making a fool out of ourselves. Because as far as society, the records, and history, Arabs are not black skinned, nappy haired people. Now we can modernize it and say we're 5%. God's in the planet Earth, nation of Islam, and Saudi Allah. We can modernize it, but at the root of it, you follow? There's still Arabs. You go to Nigeria amongst the Hausa, they can be as black as night, and they're Muslims, they're still surrendering to an Arab's culture, meaning if you take it back to its point of origin, you don't see you, you see an Arab. So you don't have the right, and your rights won't support you in any international courts in this world saying, I am a Muslim, by religion, because Muslim will be synonymous with Muhammad of 570 who gave birth to it, women, and the Muslims have to fabricate a false history to stay in the world of trouble by saying all the prophets before Muhammad were also Muslim until you say prove it. He said, well, I can show you the Quran. I didn't ask you to show me your book. Your book started in the year 610 and stopped in the year 631 when Muhammad died. This is when Muhammad received his first revelation. Moses, Jesus, Abraham, or all of them were before Muhammad got the Quran. Correct? Right. If the criteria for being a Muslim is belief in the Quran, then how could Jesus have been a Muslim if the Quran didn't exist when Jesus was born? How could Moses have been a Muslim if the Quran didn't exist when Moses was born? See, Muslims had to create a fake history because they only got 1,400 years of history and now with computers, people are able to jump thousands of years in time in a couple of seconds. Historians, anybody can become a historian just by opening a laptop computer and doing a clip, putting in Gorola and go back to Muhammad and say, well, then how could Jesus have been a Muslim if 
The criteria for being a Muslim is making salat five times a day. And Jesus didn't make salat five times a day. And the criteria for being a Muslim is you can't make prayers anytime you want to. You must make them according to a schedule. And Jesus went to God in the Gethsemane when he felt like and fell on his face and prayed. So what's your criteria? They needed to fit in history to control the world as the new world order. You understand? Now let's go back again. Let's go back, because we eliminate this every time you say, I'm a Muslim, I'm a original man, and I'm an Asiatic black man. You got a whole bunch of crap. Asiatic black man, you think you're slick. You think you're easing into Asia with these Arabs, but you ain't. That's a con, Asiatic black man. It gets you out of Africa into Asia, so you can start thinking, I'm an Asiatic, I think you ain't no Asiatic. Look up the word Asia, means Orient. And you ain't no Oriental. You can slam, you can take your eyes slam, and you still won't be an Oriental. <laughs> you know what I mean? The next step is to go back to Jesus. When I go back to Jesus, I go back 2,000 years ago. You got that? Got it. That AD and BC, they real confused. They don't know where the world is going. <laughs> now, when you get the picture of Jesus in your mind, and don't lie, because you've seen the picture we do, nigga. But nigga lie, nigga lie. Quick, don't lie. <laughs> Right? When you think of Jesus, what do you think of? That man on your grandmother's wall. Don't lie. Either he's kneeling down doing this, or he's standing there doing this, or he's doing this, but the same old little Jewish boy. But he's definitely not Joshua from down the block. He's definitely not no black man with no big lips and no thick nose and no nappy hair. Now, we can draw all the black Jesuses we want. The same way the Muslims can fabricate any part of history they want, we can start creating black Jesus to make us feel good. But when the world looks at it, you follow? And you say, I am a Christian. Christian is synonymous with Romans and Greeks. Correct? And it doesn't fit you. The shoe don't fit. Or should I say gloves? <laughs> when we go back to Moses, we're going back to 4,000 years. Actually, three and something, but 4,000 round off. Now, now there's a little trick in history. Because Moses was born in Egypt. Correct? He wasn't considered a little white boy born in Egypt. He was considered an Egyptian while he was in Egypt. Because they gave him an Egyptian name, Moses which simply meant to be drawn out of the Nile. Joseph got them into Egypt, the Israelites. The Israelites who got into Egypt came in there after they had, after Solomon them had already mixed in with Hittites. Because the description of Solomon in the Bible is that he's light-skinned with black straight hair. Not that he's an African. I don't care how much Rastafarians want Solomon to be black. Solomon, according to the Bible, is burly, with hair like raven, black like a raven. That's black straight hair with an ivory belly. Now, one of you niggas upstairs will pop open that belly. There ain't gonna be no ivory that milk is dribbling off your lips. <laughs> you understand? So Solomon was a light skinned, he was one of us, but he was light skinned with black hair. The Egyptians did not like that, that blood mixing. But the Israelites did get into Egypt to work for us and mix in with our blood creating a lot of these pictures you see on, of Egypt today with all these different races of people. But Moses was considered one of them, but of mixed blood, not a half original man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Moses was there with mixed blood, but you don't. In history, they will not identify Moses with American Negro or African. Though Moses was born in Africa, they will not say Moses is an African. They'll say Moses is a Jew. Over and over again. Is that right? So again, Israelite Hebrews, Hebrew Israelites, black Jews, whatever you want to call yourself, when you say you are Israelite, you are being related back to Jew. I'm saying, I, I don't mean in your little corner with your 13 followers. And all y'all sitting around with big Jewish stars on saying, well, that's not who I'm talking to. Y'all can tell each other anything you want. I'm saying when you present your case to the world for identity purposes, Cause that's what it's getting down to. You follow what I'm saying? When we got to go up against the world and tell them who the hell we are and stop letting them tell us who we are. They didn't change who we are in the last hundred years five different times. We were nigger, nigger, negro, 
Afro-American, not African-American, but they won't say more. You understand what I'm saying? They will keep naming us as long as we'll keep on accepting them. Nobody else comes over here to this country and allows other people to name them. The Italians come over here and you go to a pizza store and they got an Italian flag up, red, orange, and white, and they'll say, I am an Italian. You call them a, a greaser, or what's another thing they use for them? A what? They don't, they don't recognize it. They take it out as an insult. If you call the Chinese a slope head or slant eye, they take it out as an insult. They call you a nigger, a nigger or Afro-American, you say, thank you, sir. <laughs> or color. Like, I got more colors on me. I got the less colors on me than anybody on the planet. Everybody else got blue eyes, blonde hair, red hair, green eyes, gray eyes, pink skin, red skin, beige skin. Niggas all come in one color. How do we end up colored? 